Welcome to Hilarious Historia, where history's hidden hilarity comes to light. Today, we're taking a closer look at the man on the $100 bill, and no, not for a spending spree, but to uncover the jester behind Mr. Benjamin Franklin himself. Known for his electric personality and experiments, Benny wasn't just about lightning and bifocals. He was America's first comedian in disguise. So, if you've ever wondered whether a founding father could make you laugh, stick around as we reveal how Franklin was not only worth every penny, but also every pun. Let's dive into the life of the man who could give modern-day influencers a run for their money, both literally and figuratively, right here on Hilarious Historia. Benjamin Franklin, the Renaissance man of the 18th century, printer, scientist, diplomat, and the only founding father who could rock bifocals like a fashion statement. Welcome to Hilarious Historia, where today we're flipping through the pages of history to find the emojis between the lines. Franklin, a face familiar to anyone who's ever felt the weighty responsibility of holding a $100 bill, wasn't just about that electric kite flying business or crafting the blueprint for the American dream. Oh no, he was also the unofficial pioneer of colonial banter. Beneath the surface of his well-documented achievements, Franklin harbored a secret weapon, his wit. This man was slinging zingers before Twitter made it cool, using pseudonyms not just for privacy, but for the sheer joy of trolling his 18th century audience. Imagine, if you will, a world where Franklin's Instagram bio might read, inventor, statesman, fireman, and part-time stand-up philosopher. He dabbled in satire, pendices that made you think and chuckle, and wasn't above a fart joke or a scholarly essay on the subject, because why not? In today's episode, we're diving into the archives to bring you the best of Franklin's Lowell moments. So let's turn down the seriousness a notch and explore how Benny F. turned colonial America into his personal comedy club, proving that a well-placed quip can be just as impactful as a lightning bolt. Moving right along on Hilarious Historia, let's dive into Franklin's penchant for pseudonyms and the literary equivalent of wearing a fake mustache to the party. His pen name shenanigans, Benjamin Franklin, the OG of anonymous blogging, took to the printing press like a cat to YouTube, becoming an 18th century viral sensation before the internet was even a thing. Enter silence do good. Franklin's first alter ego, a middle-aged widow with a sharp tongue and an even sharper pen. Silence, with her keen observations and which sharper than the quill she was penned by, became the voice of critique against societal norms and the absurdities of colonial life. Franklin, a teenage rebel with a cause and a penchant for satire, smuggled these letters into his brother's newspaper, the New England Courant. Imagine sneaking tweets into your sibling's social media feed, but with more quills and less Wi-Fi. Through Mrs. Dogood, Franklin poked fun at everything from the pomposity of local authorities to the questionable fashion choices of the day. He was trolling society with such elegance that readers clamored for more, unaware that the wise widow was actually a cheeky teenager hiding behind the printed word. Then there was poor Richard, or Richard Saunders, the supposed author of Poor Richard's Almanac, a compilation of weather forecasts, household tips, and enough witty aphorisms to fill a modern-day meme account. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise, quipped poor Richard in what we might now call the original life hack. Through these personas, Franklin wasn't just having a laugh. He was shaping public opinion, proving that humor could carry serious weight. His ability to cloak sharp criticisms and observations in humor allowed him to communicate with a broad audience, making complex ideas accessible and, more importantly, entertaining. So, as we peel back the layers of Franklin's pen name shenanigans, we find not just a man hiding behind a curtain of anonymity, but a masterful communicator who knew that sometimes the best way to make a point is to make him laugh. Onward, we march through the delightful eccentricities of Benjamin Franklin on Hilarious Historia, and what's next is truly a testament to the man's unmatched wit and love for the lighter side of life. 
Let's raise our glasses to The Drinker's Dictionary, a rollicking ride through the many ways one can describe being, shall we say, over-refreshed, without ever uttering the word drunk. In this spirited compilation, Franklin, ever the observer of human nature, listed no fewer than 228 euphemisms for the state of inebriation. From being nymptopsical to as drunk as a wheelbarrow, Franklin's playful language not only showcased his creative genius, but also painted a vivid picture of social habits and the era's colorful vernacular. Imagine Franklin at a party, quill in hand, chuckling to himself as he jotted down the night's best descriptions of Uncle John, who, after one too many, had become fuddled, globular, or perhaps even pissed as a fart. If Franklin had dared to be so bold in his phrasing, this was the 18th century equivalent of live-tweeting a friend's progressively hilarious stages of tipsiness at a modern-day gathering. The Drinker's Dictionary wasn't just for laughs, though. Franklin, ever the moralist in a jester's cap, aimed to highlight the folly of excessive drinking by showing just how ridiculous one could become. It was his way of holding up a mirror to society, albeit with a smirk, suggesting that perhaps there were better ways to spend one's time than inventing new ways to describe being three sheets to the wind. Through this humorous piece, Franklin reminds us that the more things change, the more they stay the same. People in his time, much like today, enjoyed a good party, and Franklin, with a twinkle in his eye, was there to document every silly, sodded moment. So, here's to Benjamin Franklin, who showed us that history isn't just about battles and declarations, but also about the joy found in the human condition, even at its most inebriated. Benjamin Franklin, known for his electric mind and sparking wit, wasn't content with just playing the roles of statesman, inventor, and writer. He also had to be the maestro of inventing new musical instruments. Enter the glass harmonica, an invention that sounds like it was the product of Franklin saying, hold my beer, watch this, but in the most cultured and sophisticated way possible. Inspired by the sweet tones produced by wet fingers rubbing the rims of wine glasses, Franklin decided the world needed a more efficient way to create this ethereal music. In 1761, he invented the glass harmonica, because why play one wine glass when you can play a whole assembly of them with a spin of a wheel? The instrument consisted of glass bowls of different sizes, mounted on a spindle, and played by touching the rims with wet fingers. It was, in essence, the 18th century version of a DJ spinning tracks, only much more delicate and requiring significantly less electricity. The glass harmonica intrigued and amused audiences with its hauntingly beautiful sounds, becoming quite the sensation in Europe. It was the kind of instrument that could lead to a room full of powdered wigs nodding in unison, bewitched by its melodies. Franklin himself was quite proud of his invention. And why wouldn't he be? It was the perfect blend of science, music, and a touch of whimsy. However, the harmonica's reception wasn't all standing ovations. Some claimed its sounds could drive people mad, possibly making it the first and only musical instrument to be feared for its psychological impact as much as it was revered for its musicality. This didn't deter Franklin, who likely found the entire situation amusing. After all, causing the stir was part of his repertoire, whether through words or, in this case, music. Thus, the glass harmonica stands as a testament to Franklin's inventive humor a reminder that his creativity knew no bounds. It wasn't just an invention. It was a performance, a spectacle of sound that captured the imagination of all who heard it. And in true Franklin fashion, it was a blend of scientific curiosity and a playful poke at the conventional, proving once again that Franklin was always in tune with his sense of humor, even when orchestrating the music of glass. In the archives of scientific inquiry, few have dared to tread where Benjamin Franklin boldly ventured with his tongue-in-cheek proposition, fart proudly. This satirical essay showcases Franklin's unparalleled ability to blend humor with a critique on the scientific community's more, shall we say, fragrant pursuits. Addressing the Royal Society, Franklin, with a perfectly straight face, 
proposed that scientists dedicate their efforts to making flatulence less offensive to the olfactory senses. Yes, you heard that right. Franklin essentially asked the brightest minds of the day to put a pin in their quests for knowledge and instead turned their attention to the pressing issue of smelly farts. Fart proudly wasn't just a whimsical flight of fancy, but a clever jab at the sometimes absurd priorities of scientific research. Imagine the scene. Esteemed members of the Royal Society, perusing their latest correspondence, only to find Franklin musing on the potential benefits of odorless flatulence. It's the 18th century equivalent of suggesting a Nobel Prize for the quietest sneeze. Through this essay, Franklin demonstrated his uncanny ability to use humor as a tool for social commentary. He wasn't merely poking fun at the Royal Society. He was highlighting the importance of practicality in scientific research. Why obsess over the minutia when there are everyday issues to solve? In Fart Proudly, Franklin reminds us that science isn't just about lofty ideals and groundbreaking discoveries. It's also about improving human life, one less embarrassing moment at a time. So while the essay might raise eyebrows and perhaps suppress giggles, it stands as a testament to Franklin's wit and his ability to engage with societal norms in the most unexpectedly humorous ways. Benjamin Franklin's foray into satire wasn't limited to humorous essays and inventive musical instruments. He also wielded his wit as a political tool, shaping public opinion and policy with a masterful touch. Among his contributions to American iconography and discourse are two standout examples, the proposal of the turkey as the national bird and the iconic join or die snake cartoon. Franklin's suggestion that the turkey, rather than the bald eagle, should be the United States national symbol was a display of his humorous yet insightful critique of American values and identity. In a letter to his daughter, Franklin praised the turkey as a true original native of America and a bird of courage, while he criticized the bald eagle for its lack of moral character, noting its habit of stealing fish from the hardworking osprey. This proposal, while made partly in jest, highlighted Franklin's knack for embedding serious reflections on national identity within his humor, poking fun at the emerging country's search for symbols that truly represented its values and character. On a more serious note, Franklin's Join or Die cartoon served as a powerful piece of political satire with far-reaching implications. Published first in his Pennsylvania Gazette in 1754, the cartoon depicted a segmented snake, each piece representing one of the American colonies to underscore the importance of colonial unity against French and Native American forces during the French and Indian War. This image later transcended its original context to become a rallying cry for unity among the colonies in the lead-up to the American Revolution. It was a vivid, memorable call to action, demonstrating Franklin's understanding of satire and symbolism as means to communicate complex political messages and mobilize public sentiment. Through these satirical proposals and political cartoons, Franklin showcased his ability to engage with and influence public discourse on policy and national identity. His use of humor and satire was not merely for entertainment. It was a strategic tool for critique, persuasion, and unity, reflecting his deep engagement with the political and social issues of his time. Franklin's legacy in this arena reminds us of the power of satire to shape political narratives and the role humor can play in serious discussions about governance and national character. Benjamin Franklin's satirical talents took a particularly bold turn with the speech of Polly Baker, a fictional account that not only critiqued the prevailing gender norms of his era, but also lampooned the legal system's hypocritical treatment of women. Polly Baker, the protagonist of this clever ruse, was purportedly a woman put on trial for having an illegitimate child, her fifth offense of this nature. However, rather than expressing remorse, Baker delivers a spirited defense of her actions, questioning the fairness of punishing women for what was, in her view, a natural and morally neutral act. Franklin's creation of Polly Baker was a masterstroke in social commentary. Through Baker's speech, 
He highlighted the double standards applied to men and women regarding sexual behavior, pointing out that while women faced severe penalties for out-of-wedlock pregnancies, men often escaped societal censure and legal consequences for their role in such situations. Baker's argument that she should be rewarded rather than punished for her fertility and motherhood turned contemporary arguments on their head, exposing the absurdity and injustice of the legal system's treatment of women. This fictional account was so convincingly crafted that it was taken as a genuine news item by many of its initial readers. Franklin's hoax did not merely entertain. It sparked debate and discussion about the laws and societal norms governing sexual conduct and the rights of women. By giving voice to Polly Baker, Franklin used satire to challenge his readers to reconsider their prejudices and the laws of the time demonstrating his belief in the power of humor to provoke thought and encourage social change. The speech of Polly Baker stands out as one of Franklin's most poignant uses of satire, a testament to his wit and his commitment to questioning societal norms. Through the story of Polly Baker, Franklin critiqued the hypocrisy of his society's gender norms and punitive laws, leaving a legacy that continues to resonate in discussions about gender equality and the role of satire in social critique. Benjamin Franklin's tenure as a diplomat in France is a testament to how wit and humor can be powerful tools in international relations. His charm, intelligence, and keen sense of humor played pivotal roles in securing French support for the American Revolution, demonstrating that diplomacy doesn't always have to be a stiff and solemn affair. Franklin's arrival in France was met with great enthusiasm. He quickly became the toast of Paris, his image celebrated in portraits, medallions, and fashion. This American in a simple fur cap, embodying the ideal of the noble savage, captivated the French imagination. Yet it was Franklin's wit and ability to engage in sharp, insightful banter that truly won over the French aristocracy and intellectuals. He was a master at using humor to disarm his opponents, build rapport with key figures, and subtly promote the American cause. One of the most illustrative examples of Franklin's diplomatic humor involved his use of silence. During negotiations, Franklin often remained quiet, smiling knowingly, or offering a witty remark that would cut to the heart of the matter, leaving his counterparts both amused and persuaded. His ability to convey profound truths in a lighthearted manner made him a beloved figure in French salons, where intellectual agility and wit were highly prized. Franklin also used humor to underscore the seriousness of the American quest for independence. By presenting this struggle in a manner that was both engaging and accessible, he helped to humanize the American cause, making it more relatable to the French public and its leaders. His clever use of satirical letters, purportedly leaking British plans to the press, mocked the enemy and highlighted the righteousness of the American fight for liberty. Moreover, Franklin's charm offensive included hosting lavish dinners where his wit and storytelling prowess were on full display. These gatherings were not mere social events, but strategic opportunities to cement alliances, gather intelligence, and sway public opinion in favor of the American revolutionaries. Through his diplomatic efforts, Franklin demonstrated that humor and wit could transcend cultural and language barriers, building bridges between nations. His success in France not only secured crucial military and financial aid for the American Revolution, but also left a lasting legacy on the use of diplomacy as an art form, one where humor is as vital a tool as any treaty or declaration. Franklin's time in France showcases the power of wit in diplomacy, proving that a well-timed joke or a clever retort can indeed help change the course of history. Benjamin Franklin's personal correspondence is a treasure trove of wit, showcasing his ability to infuse humor into even the most mundane aspects of daily life. His letters often included playful advice to friends, humorous observations, and clever quips that reveal a man who found amusement in the world around him. These writings provide a more intimate look at Franklin's personality, highlighting his love for laughter and his skill at using humor to strengthen bonds with others. One notable example of Franklin's humorous advice 
is found in a letter to a young man about choosing a mistress, wherein Franklin lists the advantages of older women with such earnest satire that the reader is left both chuckling and pondering the complexities of human relationships. His ability to discuss such a delicate topic with humor and intelligence showcases Franklin's gift for navigating sensitive subjects with ease and charm. Franklin also had a knack for making light of his own experiences and challenges. In his correspondence, he often joked about the trials of aging, once quipping that he was retaining the humor of youth in old age. His letters are peppered with witty observations about life's ironies and absurdities, demonstrating his belief that humor was not just a form of entertainment, but a way to cope with and reflect on life's experiences. Moreover, Franklin's playful use of language and inventive wordplay added another layer of humor to his letters. He enjoyed puns and clever turns of phrase, using them to add a spark of joy to his communications. His writing style itself became a source of amusement as he played with words to create double meanings or to surprise his readers with unexpected conclusions. Through his personal correspondence, Franklin left us with a rich legacy of humor that transcends time. His letters not only offer insights into his character, but also serve as a reminder of the enduring power of humor to connect people, lighten the burdens of life, and provide solace amid its complexities. Franklin's use of humor in his letters underscores his belief in the importance of laughter and levity, making him not just a founding father of a nation, but also a founding figure in the art of using humor to navigate and celebrate the human condition. Benjamin Franklin's legacy is vast and varied, but one of his most enduring contributions is the role his humor and wit have played in shaping American culture and political discourse. Franklin understood that humor could be a powerful tool for communication, a means to critique society, engage with complex issues, and bring people together. His legacy of laughter continues to influence the way Americans approach serious topics, blending insight with levity to foster dialogue and understanding. Franklin's humorous writings, from the satirical essays to the witty aphorisms of poor Richard's almanac, have become an integral part of America's literary heritage. They demonstrate the value of humor in challenging norms, questioning authority, and encouraging critical thinking. Franklin's ability to make people laugh while making them think has inspired generations of American writers, comedians, and politicians to use humor as a vehicle for change and engagement. In political discourse, Franklin's use of satire and irony set a precedent for the power of humor in critiquing governance and societal issues. The Join or Die cartoon, for instance, not only rallied support for colonial unity, but also showed how humor could encapsulate complex ideas in a simple, impactful way. Today, political cartoons and satire remain vital parts of the political landscape, tracing their roots back to Franklin's innovative use of humor to communicate political ideas. Moreover, Franklin's diplomacy, characterized by his wit and charm, illustrates how humor can bridge cultural divides and foster international relationships. His success in France, where he used humor to win allies for the American cause, highlights the role of humor in diplomacy and international affairs, teaching that laughter can indeed be a universal language that opens doors and hearts. Franklin's blend of humor with serious discourse has also influenced the American approach to public speaking and writing, encouraging a style that is both engaging and thought-provoking. His legacy teaches us that humor can be a powerful ally in discussing and understanding the world's complexities, making difficult topics more accessible and less intimidating. In conclusion, Benjamin Franklin's legacy of laughter is a testament to the enduring power of humor in American culture and political discourse. By showing that it is possible to engage with serious topics in a way that is both insightful and entertaining, Franklin has left a lasting impact on how we communicate, critique, and connect with one another. His life reminds us that humor is not just a form of entertainment, but a vital tool for exploration, understanding, and change.